Hey guys, welcome. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I've done a tutorial. I'm doing a lot of work. Uh, it's summertime, so I'm an HVAC guy. And uh, you know how it goes. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and make this fun little procedural castle piece. It's like a little piece for a castle. Uh, I'm going to show you some concept behind how to not only get these instances to face outward like this but how to drop the noise on there so it looks a little bit more realistic a little bit more beat up um, then we're going to throw it all together with a little bit of story on capture attribute so we can check that out duplicating elements and setting the position and i'll explain why uh, this is needful and why we do this kind of thing all right let's jump right in Okay, the first thing we're going to want to do is add in a resample curve to give us some geometry control. In other words, we'll be able to add extra geo to this. And then we want to turn this from a curve to a mesh. And now that it's a mesh, we'll have some options between here and the next node to do a little bit of control work later. So let's go ahead and let's make this a mesh to points. And now that we've got point control, we'll be able to add uh, a very specific amount of blocks so it looks good. And so let's instance on points. And I'm going to instance out a mesh line. Okay, very good. And from here, I want to have another instance on points. And this one is going to be our cube, which you can kind of change this around however you see fit. Now, I'll have a specific measurement by the end of it, and we'll add some extra geo so we can do a displacement on it as well. Now, I'm going to set my resample curve to length. I'm just going to change how all of this looks. All right, and let's go ahead and make a little bit of room here. So the curve to mesh is going to give us the option to throw in some extra geometry here. So what we can do is throw in an extrude, a duplicate, elements node, and a set position. And now that we have all these in here, we can start building out the control network we're going to need to place these blocks. The duplicate elements is also going to give us control to scale up the uh, the entire block network up and down. So let's take the offset from the extrude mesh and let's just throw a vector on there. And we're going to set this to negative one. And we come over to the set position here. And let's grab the offset and tag in a combine X, Y, and Z. And from here, I want a math multiply and I'll just tag that in. Now I want the duplicate index to be controlled by the multiply going through the combine X, Y, Z. So I'm just on the Z here for the offset. And as we see here, we already have some control. Uh, it doesn't look very good though. So we're gonna need to do a couple of things to clean this up. Now I'm gonna come back to the length here for the resample curve and I'm gonna put this to 0.5. I'll go to the offset. I'm at the 0.5. I'm going to switch this from faces, so we're extruding off of edges. And then I'm going to go from point to face, because that's where I want to project this from. Now, right after the set position, before the points begin, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a merge by distance node, and that's going to help us clean this up a little bit. Then I'm going to pull the cube out from the instances here. Shift a S, and I want to get a scale elements node and drop this in, set this to 0.2, and you can see we've already got some of this cleaned up, and you can just kind of scale this however you want, but 0.2 seems to work pretty good for now. And what we want to do now that we can actually see everything is we want to get this all facing outward along the curved circle, and we can't see that, so I'm going to throw in a join geometry. And let's get the original geo tagged back in so we can see. 
it's definitely not facing the direction that we want. And so what we're going to do is right after the curve to mesh, we're going to need to capture an attribute. So let's throw in a capture attribute. Let's go from float to vector. Okay, and then we're going to pull this out. And I'm going to grab the normal and I can plug that in. And so now I can come back over and I'm going to take the rotation from our original cube instances. I'm just going to drag this over a little bit so it's a little bit closer. I type in a line and get a line Euler to vector. All right, so I took the liberty of doing some extra research on the align Euler to vector and it's actually a little bit too confusing just to throw into a blender tutorial it kind of deserves its own uh, tutorial series if you will but i can throw in a combine xyz and i'll switch my annotations and what you have are one two and three floats okay and these three floats make up a vector which can be plugged in uh, to like the rotation, right? Then all of this will be plugged into the vector. And this is how this is going to look. Uh, but there's a lot more to it, like quaternion math. It's very difficult to uh, visualize, and I'm not even going to attempt that. But once you take your attribute, which we're getting from the mesh side before it's extruded, duplicated, or anything else, before we've done anything like merge it by distance. This is like, this is the clean normal, and we're taking the normal direction, and we're going to input that as an attribute into not the rotation, but the vector, because that's what we want. We want the vector. And so what you get is an alignment. And so you're taking the curve circles normal uh, out facing, if you will, and you're now applying that coordinate system to this coordinate system from the curve circle. And then we're applying that to the geometry, to the cube. And that is going then to be instance and rotated as such. And so hopefully that explains it just a little bit better. So like if you have a rotation for something uh, and then you rotate it again, it's rotated from the first rotation. So you want to keep the align Euler to vector in mind. It's very simple and there's a lot else you can do with it. And we won't go into that right now. Now I'm going to take the attribute and plug that directly in. So right after the instances here, these are instances pumping into instances basically so we don't want that so let's realize the instances but ching and now we've got this setup going here so all we actually have to do is come over and align it on the correct axis and it looks like i've got this plugged into rotation when it needs to be into vector so forgive me there all right that looks pretty darn good now we finally got these lined up along the curved circle which i no longer need and so we're going to go ahead and cut the curved circle out of there. All right, so this is, um, we have our duplicated elements, and so it is there. We just can't quite see it, so we're going to have to move it around because it's not visible right now. So what we want to do is come over here to the mesh to points. I want to uh, match the extrusion and go from vertices to edges. And you'll see your offset and then you can come to the mesh line and let's stick with that 0.5 and then you get this now from here if you want you can actually come in and you can kind of size these up and do whatever you want with them kind of scale them in just a touch more okay so that looks pretty cool now from here what we can do is i'll throw in a set position node and i want to pull off the offset for the cube so we can displace the cube and the offset needs to be a vector so I want to get a subtract vector math and it'll pop in now from here I'm going to drop in a noise texture to the top now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 0.5 from that noise texture and that's going to give us the 
um, kind of like the mid-level offset. So if you were to have gone over, and I could hide this for just a minute and throw in a plane and throw in a simple displace modifier, and I can attach some noise to that. I can go in here and subdivide that just a touch so it's actually got um, some subdivisions, some mesh to work with, and then bring this on down a good little bit. Uh, the mid-level basically is this, and that's what the noise texture will be uh, correcting, and that's why this comes out at 0.5. Kind of keeps it on the grid for you, which is cool. So I'm going to delete that, bring back this, and what we'll do is we will set position here, pull the offset with a vector math subtract, and we're going to put in the 0.5 like we did on the displace over here for the displace texture. Now on the top, we're going to pull out noise. It's going to automatically tag in the factor, which is a single channel. We don't want that. We want the color RGB, which is going to be equivalent to the X, Y, and Z, if you will. And this can be brought to like 0.3. Let's get a good look at this. Right after the set position, I can set shade smooth and just go ahead and knock that out so it looks good. Let's come back over here and we can bring the detail up a touch. Uh, the distortion can come up a little bit as well. However you want, just to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic. And you could come in and switch this around as well. Maybe go something like 4D if you wanted to. Get some other variations. I don't really like that. I'm going to stick with 3. And don't forget, you can bring up your vertice count and make it look a lot better as well. Kind of give it some roughness. And if you want, you don't have to add too much. You can add that in a shader as well in case the viewport sh uh, slows down, but the shader may do the same thing. All right, so that's all pretty cool. Uh, we've got the length here. You can change how many blocks are there, but if you stick with the 0.5, you'll be better off. Uh, you've got the amount here, so you can now grow this as you wish. And then I can take this and output it uh, to the group input. And now I'll have something over here I can play with. Now just mind the fact that you will definitely get a little bit laggy. I'm going to keep this around like 35 or so for the vertice count. And that's effectively a subdivision, so you got to be pretty careful with that. And then you can add extra geometry to that. And so you don't end up with any overlaps. I did set the mesh line count to one and obviously just controlling that with the duplicate elements amount. Ring that bell for notifications. I'll have a Blender 4.0 update coming out soon. They've got some new sculpting nodes out which are absolutely cool and amazing. Uh, smash that subscribe and that like and I'll catch you guys in the next one.